So how long have you been Aboriginal? You know what? That you know what? That no. That's a way. That's a good question. That's a good. That's it's a joke. No. I, but you know what? You're right in a way because I was not raised Aboriginal at all. Oh, how were you I adopted? Wasn't. No, I wasn't also. But the the reserve that I was born on, and I lived in until I was four years old. Very very poor reserve. And what happened was it was right next to an air force base. So what happened was a way off the res life was for the women of the res to meet an um, air force man and marry and get off that, you know, get out of that life. No, I went to Catholic school. Oh, right. Queen, and then uh, I, right. I, yeah, then okay. I went to Dawson and I, I survived Dawson and then I went to Concordia. Survived? Were you stereotyped? Um, no, uh, they survived me actually because that was when I kind of... <laughs> Both parents are native. My mother is uh, Soto and my father is Ojibwe. But what happened was, uh, yeah, so my mother married a non-native guy, uh, an Air Force man, and we started moving all over the country. I started uh, hanging around here. I was 18, 17, 18, and I started hanging around like native bars and stuff because I wanted to, you know, meet people, and that's when I actually uh, started to drink. We lived out in Calgary. We lived on some uh, small radar bases in Manitoba. We ended up in Ottawa in uh, 1980, and then I moved here in 1990, and I've been here ever since. I was very, very conscious of the fact that both my parents um, were probably were had been alcoholic, so I was very always conscious of that. And I and I would see my like community members just pass out. And it was only when I really moved to. To Montreal that I got to see the native community. I, I started going to the Native Friendship Center in Montreal. Part of me was embarrassed but part of me was also concerned like I didn't I never wanted to be seen like that ever. I never wanted to perpetuate that so um, I hang out with my friends and stuff but I always I think in the back of my head didn't want to be a stereotype so I went to school. Uh, because my mother was raised not to be proud of it. So if anyone ever guessed... Be ashamed? Yeah, yeah. I mean, she wasn't from residential school. Neither of my parents went to residential school, luckily. In, the, in my non-native community, in my non-native life, they saw me as an Indian. But um, I didn't want, I wanted to be a part of that. So I, w I became very able to... Uh, I was like a chameleon. I was able to like speak Hebrew and then speak Tagalog and then go to church. And Whenever somebody would ask her what she was, they'd ask her if she was Filipino or, you know, they'd mistake her for whatever kind of nationality it was. Uh, she would always say no. She would never correct them though. She, you know, she would never, she would never, you know, say, well, because she wasn't proud of being Native. But then when I was with my community, when the people found out that, when my, my like, people found out that I was raised by non-Natives, and I went to the university, I went to school, and I didn't have a drinking problem or a drug problem. Or I, all of a sudden they were like, oh, you think you're better than us. Well, well, what have I done as far, I mean, basically having to research it myself, you know, and speaking to other people, like I've had to learn how to sing certain songs, just from other people that sing. You're not even, you're, you. yeah, you're not native. They judge you. You're not native, you don't speak your language, you don't do this, you, you didn't know, you don't know how to hunt, you don't know how to fish, you don't know how to do this. And learn how to dance, funny things like that, that, you know, you think that it was just inherent knowledge as a native, but you know, you'd like, like you'd have to watch them and go, okay, little step, big step, you know, because you, you, you'd feel silly, like, oh my God, I don't know how to dance, you know, yeah, like, you know. For some people, unless I speak in Inuchitut and be able to build igloos and go, it, it's never going to be enough. All these, all these other people that were on the reses until they moved here, they had all this, you know, they've had this in their culture. Yeah. So they had this big step up on it. And it's, I have to be okay with who I am. And especially becoming a mother, I realized that as long as my kids are okay, then I'm okay. And if, you know, I want to teach them too, that because they're half French. My, my, my son and my daughter, um, their father was French and my youngest one is, is non-native. Non I said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who your parents are. You have to be okay with yourself.